I'm Michael Collins, and I'm a ceramics instructor at the Dundas Valley School of Art. Today I'm going to show you a few tricks about trimming a bowl. I started with feeling the bottom of my bowl to see how much uh, clay I have to remove. And then I'm going to put some more water on the rim of the bowl, which will help create a vacuum between the wheel head and the bowl. And I'm going to use the lines on the wheel to visually center the bowl. And I'm just going to hold my finger here at the edge and make sure that I am on center. And then I'm going to push the bowl down onto the wheel and that will cause the water to create a vacuum at the bottom there. And then I'm just going to put four pieces of clay on the bottom here just as an insurance policy in case it does come unstuck while I'm working on it. This will stop it from sliding off center. And I'm pushing them down against the wheel head itself rather than against the pot. If you push them against the pot too hard then you run into problems with the clay really sticking to the pot. So I have a a Kemper tool here which is what I like. It has a round end here and it has a flat end on this end. I'm going to start with a round end. So when I'm trimming, this is what I'm going to end up with. And when I'm trimming here, anywhere that I'm doing the round part of the pot, I use the round end of the tool. And when I use the flat part, I use the flat end of the tool. And it's important to hold your tool on a 45 degree angle to the clay because that's where the cutting edge is. So if you have your tool too flat this way or too much out this way, you don't get the same cutting with it. And I'm using my left hand on the pot with a little bit of downward pressure to help keep it on the wheel and also to brace myself. You'll notice that I've got my elbows on my legs for support so that my hands aren't bouncing around. And I'm just taking away the thickness of a potato peel each time. I'm just coming down slowly, keeping in mind how long it takes for the clay to get around. It's coming at a certain pace. So if I go too quickly, then I'm going to cut it unevenly. And your pot should be leather hard for trimming. So when I threw this bowl, once it was stiff enough that I could turn it over, I turned it over to allow the bottom to dry without the top getting too, the top rim getting too dry. And I always start at the outside where I've got the most clay and I just work my way in. And I always go from the top down. That allows the trimming scraps to fall down below me. So I'm back now at the top here to what's going to be the outside of my foot. So I'm not going to go in any further from here. And now I'm going to give a little bit of curve there. So as I come down now, I'm turning the tool a little bit so that I'm developing a curve. And now at this point, I'm just going to hold the tool and push down a little bit deeper so that I have a different elevation on the body of the pot from where the, the foot is. So you can see if you look at that, we have a different level here. So when we go to wax our piece and we put our wax brush on there, the wax brush is going to sit up above that, that line, which will make it much easier and much faster to wax. And if you're working with cold wax, you have a nice clean line. If you're working with hot wax, you can just hold your brush on there and turn it on the banding wheel. It makes it much, much easier to wax. And it also creates a curve here that if your glaze happens to run on your pot, the glaze has to turn a corner there now to get down on your foot, so it helps to prevent, if you have uh, too much glaze on your pot, it helps to prevent, uh, prevent dripping. So I just rounded that into the profile of the pot. So now I'm going to go into the center of the foot and I'm going to use this end of my tool. And first I'm going to make a little line down into the pot, the depth of what I'm going to trim away. So I felt that so I know what it is I have to take away in the center. I can throw several bowls and try and get them all the same, but they're all going to vary a little bit. So if I feel them first and I put that guide mark in, now I know when I get down to that guide mark that's where I'm going to stop. So now I'm going to use the flat end of the tool and I'm going to start at the center and I'm just going to let the leading edge do the cutting. So the tool is just running parallel to the foot and I just have the slightest pressure on the leading edge. And I'm just coming out slowly, keeping in mind how long it's taken the pot to get around. And then I'm going to go back into the center. If you're getting grooving marks in the bottom when you're doing this, it means that you're pushing too hard on the leading edge. You just have a very gentle pressure on the leading edge. So now I'm down to my guide mark that I put in so I know that I'm done as far as my depth. I know I've got a good thickness on my pot. And I'm just making a final pass here just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And now I'm going to do the top part of the foot. So 
So I'm going to start the center here and I'm just going to come out, make one pass. So I've leveled that off now. And I'm just going to tweak this edge here. So on the inside of the foot now here, I like to use the round end and I just do that edge right there so that the area on the inside there just kind of gradates up. If you don't do that and you just leave it square or angular there, it's much more difficult to wax it and much more difficult to get the glaze out of there. So now, this is one of the tricks for smoothing on the bottom here is when we're using stoneware clay, it has grog in it, which is a pre-fired clay. And it's fired to a high temperature to reduce the shrinkage and then it's ground up like sand and added to the pot. It gives it a little bit of tooth when you're throwing with it. But it also leaves a lot of scratch marks when you're trimming. So if I'm going to take this wooden rib now and I'm just going to start in the center and I'm just going to hold it on a 45 degree angle to the pot and I'm slowly going to come out and I'm just putting the, the pressure of a firm handshake on it. And I'm just, what this does is it just compresses the surface, kind of burnishes the surface, similar to what I did with the chamois on the rim on, I do on the, the rims of my coffee mugs. And now I'm going to do my foot here. And then I'm going to do down the curve. And I like this tool because it's got the curves in it. I've got a flat edge there and I've got the curves for my curves here. So you can see how that's made that much smoother and much more condensed. Now here's an important thing is down here where I have um, trimmed away, where, where I've compressed the clay with my fingers, the clay is much more compressed than where I've trimmed it away. So it's going to absorb the glaze differently. And if I take the tool now and I burnish that area too, that will compress it. So when you put the glaze on the pot, it will look the same. If you use a glaze um, like a temaku, which is a black glaze, it's dependent on its thickness and, and the absorption as to how dark it is. And if we didn't compress this area here, it would come out more of a rusty color rather than bl black you get when it's on thicker. So I've just compressed that down. Now the last thing I'm going to do is just take my sponge squeezed right out and I'm just going to do the edges where the corners are there. I'm just going to just give it a little bit of pressure. And then I'm going to come down this area here where I trimmed it. So now I'm finished trimming. I'm just going to take the bowl off the wheel here. And you can see that it's still stuck on there from the vacuum. That's the power of the water on the rim. It has got that stuck on there. Now if I just push with my fingers, it may not release evenly all the way around. And when I push on it with my fingers, I may warp it. So I use the palms of my hands and I just push it to break the vacuum. And then once I broke the vacuum, I can turn the pot over. And then if the rim sometimes just needs a little pass with the sponge around the top. So now when we go to glaze that, it's going to be much easier. I'm going to wax the whole bottom here. And because this is raised up, I can uh, put my brush on there and this area will have a nice clean line.